I'm always all smiles when I'm testing a new stick, but is this as swift as I am here on this play against the goalie? You're going to have to stick around to find out. All right, guys, today we are testing the Swift ZT Pro $179 hockey stick. Very nice budget twig for beer leaguers. Uh, I'm going to give you the full rundown, take some radar slappers with it, and see how it goes. Full review coming up. Swift ZT Pro. Before we even get into any of that, the first thing we have to establish here is the Swift marketing jargon or their technique for drawing us in as consumers. And they're setting some high expectations here, guys. The first thing being their Swift Blade technology. That is the first thing they put out there. And uh, I don't really know what that is. It just basically says some carbon layering, as you can see here, but it doesn't really give you anything in terms of what the blade is giving you in terms of puck feel, you know, shot power, pop, you know, anything like that. But from my personal experience with the stick, it does provide some decent accuracy, but Swift probably should work on the Swift blade technology explanation and what it is for the consumer that it's going to do for you. Next one here is kind of the one that you don't want to put out there unless you really got the gipes to back it up. And that is the best uh, low kick feel and quickest release. 10% uh, shot increase uh, based on what? I don't really know. We don't have a previous generation Swift to go off of, so 10% increase is kind of null and void. However, to say that it's the best low kick stick you'll ever use, uh, you're kind of pushing the limits here a bit, Swift, because at the end of the day, you're going to get a guy like me that's literally used every stick ever made known to man. And unfortunately, as Decent as the release can be, which I'll get into later in the video, it is definitely not the quickest releasing stick of all time and definitely not the most shot power on a low kick stick of all time. And then the last one here in the Swift marketing is the 375 gram weight, the lightest stick of all time on the market. Not necessarily true, although it does have a pretty nice weight, which I'll get into into a second as well at 374 grams. Very impressive for this style of stick and the price point. Um, however, that lightness does not necessarily translate to shot power, and I'll get into that in one second. Let's talk about what all stick companies are going to be struggling with as they move forward into the new realm of stick technology. There is three caveats to a stick. There is shot power, kick, recoil, how hard you can shoot. There is lightness, weight, and then there is durability. Here's the caveat with sticks. You can't have all three. You can't have extremely high kicking pop, awesome shots type of stick like an FT4 with durability. Unfortunately, you have to trade those off. You can have a very good high kick, lots of pop stick with a heavy weight and good durability, but of course now you're sacrificing lightness and so on. So you can have good durability, but of course it's not gonna be light. You can have lightness, you can have durability, but you're not gonna have good shot power. And that's exactly where the Swift ZT Pro lands. So let's start with the game footage here, guys. I played two games with the ZT Pro and did two practice ices with it just to get the overall feel with it. I can score with anything. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, that's kind of the thing with having a good shot is you can make any stick work. And generally, I got my shot off just fine. It's just one of those sticks that doesn't enhance my shot like it would when I'm using one of the top end sticks. So that was kind of my biggest gripe and where I learned over the last year testing sticks, how there's the three caveats to sticks. The ZT Pro from Swift lacks quite a bit of shot power and you will be at a disadvantage if you use it in a high end game if you are relying on very, very high end shot power on your snapshots and slap shots. In terms of wristers, I could get them off, like I got one off this goalie's head and it jumped in. And you will get it off in a decent release, but at the end of the day, it does lack the shot power and that's my biggest caveat and that's what we're gonna get into.
So what is the caveats of the Swift Stick? Is it does not have much shot power, which it makes up for in its lightness, as you can see by the very thin walls. It's actually taller than most sticks by an inch or so, and uh, it rivals the CCM. So at 374 grams here, as you can see on my scale with the thin walls, it's actually very impressive because if you cut this down, it's going to be very, very light. So it is quite durable as well for how light it is. So when it comes to testing sticks, I always go with a couple practice sessions where I literally just hammer the heck out of it to test durability. And that's exactly what I did with the Swift ZT Pro is in both warmups and both games and in both practice sessions, I just drilled and drilled wristers, snapshots and slap shots just to see how durable this thing is. Because over the last year when I've been testing sticks and I do this, I actually break sticks, take you back to the Catalyst 9X a while ago, and I broke it very early. So that's all about durability testing is trying to prove that yes, this stick is durable or yes, it isn't because I am way harder on sticks than most regular players. And I play a lot, I shoot a lot, and I bring a lot to the table in terms of what I'm putting behind my shot. I'm just pretty strong and I have good shooting technique. So that's something that I've always brought and tried to the table. So where are we at? We are a durable stick. Congrats to Swift on a 374 gram stick that's very durable. So what else was I testing? I was testing release, accuracy, the feel of the blade, uh, the flex point, you know, just seeing how things felt overall on shot after shot after shot. And that's where I got a really good understanding that the ZT Pro was lacking in the shot power, was greatly durable, but of course was really nice and light. Um, it was great to stick handle with, uh, like I showed at the very first part of this video where I pulled the puck away from the goalie. Super light stick, so you can do whatever you want with it. Release is decent, but I wouldn't call it anything high-end like a rib core or even a Hyperlite and especially not a QRE10. So unfortunately, that's kind of, I think, just reminiscent of the $179 price tag overall. So let's just get into the final thoughts here on the Swift ZT Pro. All right, guys. So finish testing with the ZT Pro from Swift. And the end result here is this stick is light, has a nice blade, great accuracy. Unfortunately, it plays a little bit whippy and lacks recoil. A lot of that being a low kick stick without actual any taper or anything technology. That just is what it is at this price tag. This stick does not have the shot power that I would personally desire even in a low kick stick. So for me, that's something that ZT Pro and Swift need to work on is their shot power with their low kick stick. It's great for weight. Great for feel, but shot power, that's what Boomer needs, baby. So the final thoughts on the Swift ZT Pro. And unfortunately, I think they're gonna be a little bit disappointed with my overall review of this stick because I am a shoot first type of guy. And at the end of the day, I really find that shooting is probably the most important thing with uh, this type of stick, you know, low kick aimed at the scoring type player. So I was a little disappointed with the shot power as I discussed. So overall, let's run through where it falls into the stick tier list. And unfortunately, it is competing with a few different types of sticks, most notably the Pro Stock Hockey Stick, and that is where it falls short. And because it's competing with that brand and those sticks and the customization and the ability to do all those things, those sticks do have decent shot power, decent durability, and great release. So unfortunately, the Swift falls short of those sticks. At $179, it's a good price point, but of course, so is the Pro Stock Hockey Stick. So it's very easy for me to compare it to that stick, and it does fall below in the tier list. So let's run through it real quick. Shot power, two out of five, I really struggle with it. I can shoot 88 plus miles an hour with my CCM Jet Speed FT4 and various other sticks. I'm in the 80s, 85s, etc. I was hitting 74 or so with this stick, and generally speaking, I could tell it was lagging with the shot power, two out of five. In terms of release, it was okay for a release. It didn't have the recoil and kick for a release, although it was quick, 
And unfortunately, I'm gonna rate that out of a three out of a five. That's something that hopefully they can work on with the recoil kick and pop next time. The feel, balance, and weight was of course excellent in terms of the weight. One thing I found odd is I actually had a couple guys skate with this uh, stick in a couple warm-ups because I, I had this feeling like I was like, this stick is just weird to me. It feels weird. It's light, but feels weird. And the same thing was given to me in feedback from my teammates. They said the same thing. The stick just feels odd. I think it has something to do with the thin walls, materials, you know, what they were trying to go for. And I'm just used to the feel of other sticks. I honestly can't even explain it. And usually I'm good at this. It just feels odd. And for me, I'm gonna put that as a three out of five. And then finally, durability. The durability is excellent, guys. Super, super excellent. And we're gonna put that at a five out of five. So anyway, guys, overall, the stick does need some improvements. It's competing with the Pro Stock Hockey Sticks and various other things like that and lower tier uh, sticks from bigger companies and they will struggle. Um, I do apologize, Swift. It is what it is. I'm really hard on sticks. I review them honestly and you do have a little bit of work to do, but I will give you this caveat. I'm always here to test sticks for you guys. I test them all, I've used them all. And if you ever need it, feel free to reach out at Beer League Bum Hockey Reviews.